Hey, Frank here with another video with here with Dustin Sams over at Second Baptist, a youth ministry vet who's been in, doing youth ministry for over 20 years. Um, I want to talk about something that's kind of been on my mind lately that if you're watching this at youthmen.org, you might be watching this within the blog post I've write, that I've written. Um, if not, you can go check that out. The link's below about uh, the blog post I wrote about how youth ministry shouldn't be like a microwave. It should be like a crock pot. And, and things take time. And so, so, so my, my, my feeling, and, I, and I, we talked about this briefly, is that we oftentimes in youth ministry, when we meet with other youth pastors or we're in forums about youth ministry, we're often looking for quick fixes. You know, what's the big event that you did that drew a lot of kids? What's the prize that will draw the students in? What's the curriculum? What's the thing that will make my kids from heathens to Billy Grahams? Like, what are those things that we can do? And, and, and I see that and I understand that and I've been there. And, I've, and, and, and some of these things aren't bad. Like, yeah, what's that game you guys did? I want to steal that. Like, I stole a couple games from him that have killed in our youth ministry. But those things aren't what's going to make your youth ministry successful. And one thing I've learned over the years in my few years of youth ministry is that gimmicks might bring some kids in the door, but what's going to keep them is a long-term strategy, a long-term vision of creating community, of creating discipleship programs, and, 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 and it's going to get messy. It's going to be long. You're going to see that football kid that's going to come in strictly because he wants to hit on your girls, oh, and yeah. you're going to work on that kid for two or three years, and hopefully by the time he graduates, that time you've worked with him and he's been a community, he's now planning on going to a Christian school to go be a missionary. Yeah. So, so maybe talk about the, the, the kind of the, the culture of youth ministry with this kind of microwave philosophy and, and how it's maybe been a detriment, but, but how have you guys have implemented yeah. long-term visions? And stuff yeah, maybe? well, you know, a quick illustration with that is, you know, and, and Frank and I both played uh, uh, football and so I, we speak that language and, 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 and you practice with any sports. Uh, you practice all week, you want to see results Friday. Yeah. You practice all week, you want to see a change Friday, you you know, in, in the same way with your skill set and all that kind of stuff. Um, it's very frustrating to me when I first started in student ministry uh, because I really wasn't told that. You know, I just I'd kind of been mentored under an existing healthy student ministry and and you know never saw how it got there and all the right. heartbreaks and the ebb and flow of student ministry. You know, ebb and flow every four to six years you got a new batch of students and and if you're not you know have consistent leadership and consistent discipleship that's ongoing for students to replace that leadership vacuum, very much what we're in right now. Uh, with you know graduating out solid uh, leadership and you've got some you know you influx of new seventh graders and you know the energy and different things that's going on even though we have our group separated uh, junior high and senior high it's 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 very relevant and so uh, what Frank said about the crock pot is is a great illustration about how the, the long-term strategy um, it, you know you have to have a goal um, we evaluate uh, a couple of ways we would do this we evaluate our graduating seniors what were some of the strengths? What were some of the weaknesses? What were some areas that we need to bridge the gap with some of our teaching? Was it with, can we do that with events, uh, specifically with retreats and different things like that? Um, and uh, or, or is it Wednesday night teaching, which tends to be more life application, evangelistic outreach kind of thing? Or is it Sunday morning small groups, which tends to be the discipleship, Bible study, um, going through the Bible kind of thing? So I tell you all that to say that that we when you talk student ministry, just take a deep breath. Mm. because it does take time. I have guys ask me all the time, hey man, how'd you get to so-and-so and how'd you do that? And I said, 10 years. <laughs> you know, there, you know there, and that's, that's easy for me to say now because, you know, uh, I've, I've you know, been at it for so long, but I didn't like hearing that when I was 21, 22, 23 years old. You know, I was like, hey, what's, what is, it came to this. Uh, and I don't share this with very many people. Um, it was, I was on the verge of burnout just from going from event to event to event. And, you know, frustrated with the shallowness of my students, frustrated with the lack of, of uh, zeal of my adults that were working with me, lack of, you know, why, why doesn't everybody want to get up in the morning and chase Jesus, <laughs> you know, like I do? Well, you know, it takes time in those relationships. And it, and, and it is very much a crockpot illustration because the main thing is you've got to give, you've got to invest enough in a student before you can make a withdrawal. I mean, it's a money aspect. If you want to think about it like a, you know, a bank, you know, before you can correct behavior, you have to have enough invested in, in, in them to, to correct behavior yeah, before man. they give you the, uh, the privilege of speaking into their lives. You know, it's that whole thing. I use it all the time, catchphrase with my adults. You know, they don't, they don't care. They don't want to hear how much, you know, you know until they know how much you care. 
uh, you know, as far as, as that goes. And so the long haul is the fact, I remember, I think when it, you know, I had the light bulb moment when I realized that, you know, that kid that upset me on Wednesday or that kid that didn't or is falling away, <clears throat> That's going to happen again next year. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's gonna, you know that, and it, it's heartbreaking. And you know, I spent you know nights you know crying myself to sleep over students that um, that uniquely sit under the same teaching as some of my students that have gone into ministry. Yeah, sit under the same teaching, sit under the same messages. They sit under the same. They go to the same events, same camps, and they make life changing decisions to go the opposite way. And mm. so ultimately, you have to understand that God is in control of all that stuff. You are not the junior Holy Spirit. Mm. You have to let the students come to that genuine faith, not the hand-me-down faith of their grandma, not because their mom wants them to be there and different things like that. Um, and it just takes time. And planning, um, when I think of planning crock-pot-wise, you know, I think of some of the, the, the good meals that my wife makes with, with, that, with that illustration. And it does. How long is this? Sometimes they're eight, ten eight, hours. Eight, ten hours that. all day. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and the aspect of something that's a quick fix, I was very specific in, in, in some of, actually every search team that I talked to uh, with when I come to Second Baptist um, was if you want a quick fix guy, that is not me. Right. I'm not a quick fix. You know, I, I, we, we, we all know about the other churches that run hundreds of students and they set themselves on fire one week and they spend a couple of weeks healing and they do, do some sort of large event, you know, and they get them all back and they're like, yeah, this is awesome. You know what? God gives me the students that we have in our ministry because he sees us as faithful with the hurting. Now, I'm not belittling any of the big show because we have lights and we have, we have fog that comes out. We have a student praise band and we have all that stuff. But it is all just a part of the ingredients of the overall process of getting a student from uh, where he was before Christ to being able to eat meat. Mm. And I think so many times we miss that. We, we send them out into the world still yeah. drinking milk, dude. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, you got any thoughts on that? I, yeah. I just, or maybe another follow-up question because it's important to know that it takes time. It's okay. A failure is not fatal. Whatever cliche or bumper sticker you need yeah. to stick on it to, yeah. to feel good about it. If you're chasing after Jesus, if you're preaching the gospel, and Jesus Christ crucified, you're gonna see students' lives changed. Yeah. And it's not about the quick fix event. Uh, it's not about the, you know, different things. Um, we, we don't add anything to our calendar that right. doesn't have a purpose right. for our overall strategy. So I think that's a big deal. Yeah.